Hello, hello, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So it's basically common knowledge now that Zendaya is a red carpet icon. She's always someone we look forward to on the red carpet because we're always interested to see what it is that she's wearing. And in today's video, I want to talk about how Zendaya's red carpet fashion and her status as a celebrity do go hand in hand. And of course, I can't talk about every single Zendaya look. Trust me, I wish I could because she's got some great ones. But I do want to hit on some pivotal ones and talk about how her style has evolved over the years. And there's so much that Zendaya does related to fashion that's not just being on the red carpet. Like she models, she attends fashion week and things like that. But for the sake of this video, I will mainly be focusing on her red carpet fashion, though I'll touch on some other things that Zendaya and Law Roach do in the fashion world as well here and there. Zendaya was introduced to most on Shake It Up, where she played tween dancer Rocky Blue. The Disney Channel series ran from 2010 to 2013, and during that time, Zendaya, who was born in 1996, was about 14 to 17, give or take. Zendaya had been working with her stylist Law Roach since 2010, so basically the entire time she's been in the public eye. When they first met, Law was working as a personal shopper for a family friend, and Zendaya needed styling for the Never Say Never movie premiere. Law said they went shopping for the event and connected almost immediately. To this day, he considers Zendaya more of a little sister than a client. He had to learn how to become a stylist for Zendaya practically overnight, and so they grew together. Now that we're over a decade removed from some of their earliest looks together, it's interesting to see what stuck and what didn't. Some looks are more representative of Zendaya than others, but what's important is that Law showed early on that while Zendaya typically followed trends at the time, she liked to experiment also. At this time, Law said he and Zendaya shot from smaller independent brands. This is because, in his words, they were still emerging. Another interesting thing about this time is that Zendaya's social media accounts show her personal style differs from her red carpet style. And Law has admitted early on he had more of the final say in what Zendaya wore. This time in Zendaya's life has been nicknamed her swag era, and a lot of people look back on it jokingly. And not necessarily in a way that's making fun of Zendaya, but in an understanding way, since most of us look back on younger photos of us as teenagers and we all wonder what the hell we were wearing. But the important thing these pictures show is that Zendaya has a personal style. It's very evident that this girl is interested in fashion and keeps up with what's current, especially in her age group. Zendaya shared several of her outfits on her own Instagram, creating a sort of lookbook for her style. It seems like several of these looks influenced Zendaya's red carpet style once Law didn't really have to adhere to the Disney girl image anymore. As Shake It Up was ending, there was a pivot to attempt to position Zendaya as not just a Disney girl, but as a teen star. Her red carpet looks were bright, bubbly, and definitely trendy. They deviated somewhat from that distinct Disney style and were more in line with what girls her age actually wore or wanted to wear. Law wasn't putting Zendaya in the most daring avant-garde looks, and even though these weren't the boldest looks, they did the job of establishing Zendaya as someone who was not only fashionable, but intentionally so. Law said he purposely dressed Zendaya in clothes that other celebs had already worn, which stylists typically avoid. But not only did he say this was because Disney girls didn't hold much weight in the fashion world at the time, so they didn't really have access to what they do now, but it also got Zendaya into a lot of the Who Wore Best features, which brought her more attention. Honestly, a genius tactic. Back then, Zendaya was positioning herself as a singer along with her acting. She put out her first single, Swag It Out, independently back in 2011. Her following two singles were released through Walt Disney Records. Now in 2013, Zendaya was promoting her self-titled album and the lead single, Replay. The album was released through Hollywood Records, which produces music that's a little bit more mature than Walt Disney Records' music. Zendaya was working on the final season of Shake It Up, so it makes sense the record deal came through Disney. So of course, Zendaya is out and about promoting Replay in her album, but to further position herself as a music star and an actress outside of Disney, Zendaya announces she's attached to the Lifetime Aaliyah biopic. And just the month before Shake It Up ends, Zendaya gives us this Aaliyah-inspired look. Technically, the look was likely a Halloween costume, but it's still doubled as a calculated fashion move. In the end, Zendaya dropped out of the project, the consensus being that she dodged a bullet. Even in the years following, it still feels like Zendaya's style still has this R&B girl vibe to it. Her fashion followed a lot of similar cues to a lot of the R&B girls at the time, like Tinashe or Justin Skye, or even Rihanna somewhat, on and off of the red carpet. And of course, these girls are more or less following similar trends, so it's not to say any of them were copying each other. One that really comes to mind is this AMA's look from November of 2014. And while this ensemble is very current for its time, the hair was actually an homage to Diana Ross, who received an Achievement Award that night. Another is this look from that year's BET Awards. 2015 was a pivotal year in fashion for Zendaya. 
At this point, she'd been around for years, so some people knew who she was, but she still hadn't had that big star-making role yet. However, what Zendaya Law and her team were doing right was putting her on as many red carpets as possible. Zendaya is around 18 at this time, and she's definitely experimenting with her fashion more. There are some hits and some misses, but the looks aren't boring. 2015 was also the year Zendaya began to pull more risque looks on the red carpet. But still, the looks weren't too mature for her age, which Law was intentional about. Definitely. Cleopatra mixed with the Beatles. <laughs> it's a, she's a hybrid. She's a hybrid. Yeah, this one, she she was wearing um, DKNY mm -hmm. and a lot of accessories. A lot of accessories. Yeah. This was a good look, like hair or not, like mm -hmm. this look I felt, it was perfect for the award show because it was so bright and colorful, yeah. but it was still mature, like it wasn't like kiddish. Yeah, but it had a little sex appeal to it. Exactly. There's a clear eagerness on Zendaya's part to not just be seen as a Disney teeny bopper, but as a genuine celebrity. Though she hasn't had too many roles and projects to confirm that, Zendaya is constantly projecting it through her style. So even though she returned to Disney to do Casey Undercover at the beginning of 2015, Zendaya has made it so that we're not confused when we see her on these bigger red carpets. By this time, she started appearing at more prestigious events like the Grammys and the Oscars. At that year's Oscars, Zendaya would be at the center of a controversy that would heighten interest in her red carpet appearances. She arrived on the red carpet wearing a simple but elegant white Vivian Westwood gown. Her hair was styled in faux locks, and mind you, this was at a time when it wasn't as common to wear braids and faux locks and other protective styles on red carpets, especially for the Oscars. Not unheard of, but less common, definitely. Juliana Rancic, a co-host of the Fashion Police, made an ignorant comment regarding Zendaya's hair. Juliana stated, she has such a tiny frame that this hair overwhelms her. I feel like she smells like patchouli or weed. Immediately, Juliana received backlash, with many claiming her comment was flat out racist. Zendaya responded to Juliana with an Instagram statement. It read, There is a fine line between what is funny and disrespectful. Someone said something about my hair at the Oscars that left me in awe. Not because I was relishing in rave outfit reviews, but because I was hit with ignorant slurs and pure disrespect. To say that an 18-year-old young woman with locks must smell of patchouli or weed is not only a large stereotype, but outrageously offensive. There is already a harsh criticism of African-American hair in society without the help of ignorant people who choose to judge others based on the curl of their hair. I don't usually feel the need to respond to negative things, but certain remarks cannot go unchecked. Zendaya's decision to wear the faux locks was in part inspired by her father, who actually has locks. Juliana later apologized to Zendaya and those she offended, claiming her comments had nothing to do with race and she was talking about a bohemian chic look. And that's a lie because one, her comment didn't at all address anything that Zendaya was wearing, and you also don't say that someone looks like they smell like weed if you think they look chic. Zendaya and Law described the look as simple, clean, and fresh, which is what it was. Zendaya, who was 18 at the time, accepted Juliana's apology, saying she had to speak out because she had so many young fans who looked up to her. In honor of Zendaya, Mattel made a Barbie doll inspired by her, complete with faux locks. Not only did this situation put more eyes on Zendaya and her red carpet looks, it was also a move that increased a lot of people's respect for Zendaya. Not to say that people didn't like her before, but standing up for herself certainly made more people want to root for her. Zendaya and her team capitalized off of this attention, having Zendaya turn out look after look. She was still appearing at events like the AMAs and the Billboard Awards and the BET Awards, but continued appearing at higher profile events also. Months after the Oscars, Zendaya made her first Met Gala appearance wearing Fausto Puglisi. Okay, so Queen, this honey. Like, right, this is, this is Warrior Princess. Okay. She was wearing Fausto Puglisi, of one of our good course. friends. We're obsessed with him. And he created everything, the, the jewelry and the headpiece and the gown, and it was great. Like, it was very Warrior Princess. And this was the same year that Rihanna shut the carpet down with her yellow gold pay dress, so the fact that Zendaya managed to stand out with this look was very big for her. At the time, and still, pretty much the only consistent thing about Zendaya's red carpet looks is that you never know what to expect. Law says Zendaya doesn't have a signature style, and so her looks show off several facets of herself. Zendaya's style oscillates so well between classic and modern, masculine and feminine, and everything in between. And even in looks that appear more classic, there's still a modern edge. This positions Zendaya as someone who always has her finger on the pulse of fashion, so that even when she's classic, she's current. Though Law said that they pull a lot of inspiration from the 60s, 70s, and 80s, which is evident in several of Zendaya's red carpets, she never looks dated. Zendaya has said one of her favorite looks that Law styled for her is this one from 2013, where the inspiration for the hair and the clothing was Pocahontas meets Cher. By the mid-2010s, Zendaya had become a fashion it girl. 
She's still doing Casey undercover, but it also aligned herself with A-listers like Taylor Swift and Beyonce by appearing in their projects. At this point, Zendaya is also appearing in several fashion magazines and on websites and making guest appearances on shows like Project Runway. She and Law Roach are invited to do interviews in Zendaya's fashion and their working relationship. The pair even launched their first fashion line together, the short-lived Daya by Zendaya. Zendaya had the advantage of still being a fashion icon amongst her peers and fans, but at the same time, she's starting to pull more and more weight in the high fashion world as well. She's dressing less trendy on the red carpets because she's starting to wear more designers and attend higher profile events. Law is continuing to put her in garments that will make her stand out from the crowd rather than earn her comparisons to others so that her name is mentioned. Zendaya has been open about how elevating her red carpet fashion helped her be taken more seriously as an actress and get bigger roles. A lot of people don't realize how big a role styling can play in someone's image and status and how elevating one's style can help them enter more exclusive spaces. This is exactly what happened for Zendaya. And as they say, you have to dress for the job that you want and Law helped Zendaya do that. Honestly, I feel like a lot of people forget Zendaya was with Disney for as long as she was because she was sort of able to be in both worlds due to elevating her fashion. Law, of course, benefited from this too. As he grew into a bona fide stylist, he was able to attract other clients because of his impressive work with Zendaya. Aside from acting roles, elevating Zendaya's fashion also helped her book modeling jobs and brand endorsements. In 2016, Michael Kors recruited her for a campaign for their Access smartwatch. In their article about the campaign, Teen Vogue claims Zendaya was the perfect choice because she was youthful and energetic, yet chic and polished. At this time, Zendaya was in a partnership with Michael Kors and often wore him in photo shoots and on red carpets and even at that year's Met Gala. Zendaya was also becoming a familiar face at fashion shows. For the Michael Kors Fall 2018 show, she pulled off this ensemble, combining a cape and tracksuit that not only juxtaposes the feminine and the masculine, but also streetwear and businesswear. Zendaya and Law both sat front row at the show, and for years we see the pair side by side at several fashion weeks, red carpets, and interviews all over the world. I want to take a moment to address what exactly a stylist does. Obviously, they pick out the clothes, shoes, and accessories for the celebrity, but it's more time-consuming and meticulous than a lot of people like to give credit for. Stylists have to source and acquire clothing for these events and often have to curate more options than their client will ever wear just in case. Fashion Week is one of the biggest times for stylists to do this, so it's important they attend so that they can pull looks before others get to them. Celebrities attending or even sitting front row at fashion shows is relatively new. Fashion Week used to be for people who worked in the fashion world, not necessarily anyone of status who wore designer clothes. In all honesty, for everything other than optics, it's more important for a stylist to be at Fashion Week than their clients. Aside from just picking out clothes that fit, the stylist has to keep the image of the person they're dressing in mind and whatever they want to communicate about them. Often, stylists aren't just working with their clients for red carpets, but multiple events including interviews, photo shoots, and sometimes even their streetwear. Most celebrities don't have the time or even the skill to consistently dress themselves well for all of the events that they attend. Of course, most clients do get some input in what they wear, but it's still the stylist who executes ideas their client might have for an event, or vice versa, the stylist might craft the base of the look and the client has input on the fine tuning. Law has referred to himself as an image architect and that's essentially what a stylist is. But this is precisely why a stylist can be make or break. Because almost any stylist can put together an outfit, but not every stylist knows how to actually flatter the person they're dressing and style them in a way that makes sense for them. 2017 was another big year for Zendaya. She wowed at the Ray Kawakubo theme Met Gala with this Dolce & Gabbana gown. The parrot print was perfectly accented with Zendaya's coral lips, dewy skin, and wig. It added enough whimsy and contrast to the look, but Zendaya still looks picturesque, like something about this is just reminiscent of a painting. You would never know that Zendaya was in the ER just hours before this due to an allergic reaction. That year, Zendaya also booked two Hollywood movie roles, so aside from her usual red carpet, she also promoted her movie Spider-Man Homecoming and The Greatest Showman. Zendaya pulled a lot of classic 60s-inspired looks on these red carpets, like this pink Ralph and Russo look from the Spider-Man red carpet. Other than that, we see Zendaya and Law start to do something that's carried throughout most of Zendaya's red carpets where she's the star. Often, at least some of her looks during these press runs are a direct homage to the project she's in. It shows intentionality about the look and that she and Law aren't just putting together looks that are interchangeable for each red carpet. Zendaya wore a lot of black and red for her Greatest Showman premieres. She also wore some suits, which are a common staple of hers, but also a nod to Ringmasters. This polka dot dress evokes a clown costume, but in the most fashionable way possible. 
A standout look from the press run was this Moschino butterfly look. Popular fashion publications from Vogue to Harper's Bazaar covered Zendaya's look as they've been doing with her most show-stopping displays over the past couple years. While styled Zendaya in a simple way that let the dress speak for itself, accenting it with the sleek ponytail and simple black heels. W stated the butterfly look was a perfect way to represent Zendaya's fashion evolution and how she herself metamorphosed into a red carpet darling. W commended Law for the consistent quality of his work with Zendaya throughout 2017. Months prior, she had landed her first Vogue cover. Though she was now in her early 20s, Zendaya didn't suffer from having to figure out how to transition into a more adult image because she'd been doing so incrementally over the years. So in a sense, she'd paid her dues and was now covering Vogue and attending the Met Gala instead of starting from ground zero as an adult. Law said that over the years, they had worked to mature Zendaya's image, but never felt rushed to do so because, as he says, you have your whole life to be sexy. 2018 was another successful year for Zendaya fashion-wise and just in general. In February of that year, Casey Undercover ended, meaning she was no longer a Disney girl. Zendaya attended the Oscars for the first time since 2015, wearing this brown, one-shoulder Jean-Baptiste Valley gown. The look is simple but elegant, and the sort of tunic style of the dress makes her look like a modern Greek goddess. Zendaya wore a lot of neutrals this year, such as this August Getty dress nicknamed the Hershey Kiss dress. The silhouette is almost umbrella-like, and the shape motif created by the dress is repeated in the circular earrings. Undoubtedly, one of Zendaya's more classic looks was this dress that she wore to the Tiffany & Co. Paper Flowers event. The hairstyling and makeup scream 60s, which is common for Zendaya, but also could be a nod to Breakfast at Tiffany's. The fashion blog Tom and Lorenzo said the look wasn't Audrey Hepburn cosplay, but the look still channeled everything Audrey loved about fashion. The dress color, of course, is a nod to Tiffany blue, though it's not the exact shade. She finished off the look with black and white polka dot shoes. For the Met Gala, Zendaya took it back some centuries, channeling Joan of Arc for the Heavenly Bodies themed event. The choice was perfect because the parallels were clear. Zendaya wasn't claiming she was a saint or a martyr, but that she too was a fearless, bold young woman. Armor and chainmail, which is traditionally masculine, also relates well to the masculine edge present in several of Zendaya's looks. British Vogue noted few young women would have the charisma to pull off the Versace dress the same way Zendaya did. The following year, Zendaya attended the camp theme Met wearing Tommy Hilfiger. Honestly, this was my least favorite Met look of Zendaya's, but I still like what it represents. It's a camp interpretation of her in-law's relationship, a clear acknowledgement of how he'd helped her transform into a high-profile star. As Law had put it, fashion helps Zendaya transition from a Disney star to an actress with global box office appeal. Sadly, she was missed at the next few Met Galas. In 2019, Zendaya got another opportunity to create a fashion line. She and Law collaborated with Tommy Hilfiger to create the Zendaya Tommy line, which showed at Fashion Week. On brand for Zendaya, the collection was inspired by 70s and 80s power dressing, so a lot of the garments had a unisex quality to them, and the designs managed to be mature and conservative without being too austere. It was also inspired by the 1973 Battle of Versailles fashion show. Law said about the collection, Tommy gave us the keys. Whatever you want to do, just do it. From conception to hair and makeup and casting to the collection on the runway. 2019 was also the year Euphoria premiered. Though Zendaya had taken several roles outside of Disney by now, this was definitely her most mature role to date. Her angelic white Nina Ricci dress she wore for the photo call was a stark contrast from her character, Rue Bennett. In a way, it felt reminiscent of Zendaya's earlier red carpet days and felt light, youthful, and sweet. The organza ruffles framed the dress, and she opted for a ponytail with bangs that likewise framed her face. Law finished off the look with white heels and a simple pair of studs. Zendaya's look for the season 2 photo call was less angelic and whimsical and a little bit more understated. She wore a vintage Valentino gown, accessorizing the look with a pair of diamond earrings. Law was genius for not giving Zendaya a necklace and letting the scallop neckline be the focal point. He knows very well when to play a look up and when to let the garment do all the talking. Zendaya's hair was styled in a classic updo, her red hair serving as a subtle pop of color. The red hair, which was originally done as a nod to her role as MJ in the Spider-Man films, was also the perfect accessory for this Valentino suit Zendaya wore in Graham Norton. The purple and green is a reference to the Green Goblin. During the press runs for the Spider-Man franchise, several of Zendaya's looks were inspired directly by the films. Another great example is this Valentino look with web details. Styling the look with cornrows, which is a hairstyle that involves weaving strands of hair, was likely an intentional choice too. Another hit was this couture Scaparelli gown a lot of people compared to Doc Ock. Zendaya's also done this for films like Space Jam, where she played Lola Bunny. 
Aside from the bright colors, the ponytail in the cut of her suit is more playful to reflect that she's starring in an animated children's film and walking a more relaxed carpet. Zendaya's styling for Dune also matches not only the color palette, but also the tone of the film and the red carpets. This was a bigger budget, higher profile film. It's also a Denis Villeneuve film, which are known for their more neutral, somber color palettes. Zendaya and Law incorporate all of this into her red carpet styling. The gown she wore at the Venice Film Festival is stunning and one of my favorites of her more recent looks. She looks like a sculpture and the dress fits perfectly. The shade of brown creates a nude effect and is the same color as the sand dunes in the film. The leather of the dress, which is Balmain, is manipulated in such a way that it almost looks like latex. All of the intrigue is in the fit and the draping of the dress, showing off just how well it's constructed. It also reflects the blankness and expansiveness of sand dunes, another call back to the film. To add to this sort of simple statuesque look, Zendaya's hair is styled to look almost wet, and the look is accessorized with nude heels and a green Bulgari necklace for a pop of color. This look simultaneously fits the theme of Dune, but also manages to evoke old Hollywood as well as antiquity. Truly, this is a timeless look. Zendaya followed the same cues with this Rick Owens gown, which definitely leans into the futuristic sci-fi elements of Dune. Both the hair and the dress are asymmetrical, yet meticulously so, and in a way that balances both. Law was said that he sometimes shies away from dressing Zendaya for the male gaze. He's dressed her in several suits or suit-inspired clothing. And of course, suits can still adhere to the male gaze, but usually less so than gowns or dresses. I'm biased here because I love a suit, but these are almost always my favorite looks of Zendaya's. I mean, who can forget this Sport Max Vanity Fair look or the time the internet collectively decided that she wore a suit better than Michael B. Jordan? Other than the Sport Max suit, another favorite is this Marc Jacobs suit that Zendaya wore to the Vanity Fair Women in Hollywood event. It's a clear 80s nod, complete with the boxy silhouette, the shoulder pads, and the color blocking. Law styled it with a flat brimmed hat and heels over the opaque tights, which ups the vintage factor. Several of Zendaya's fans claimed it was a look that only she could pull off. Likewise, Teen Vogue noted that statement outfits were becoming the norm for Zendaya. Other great examples are her look for GQ Woman of the Year, where she wore this white two-piece suit and skirt by Lebanese designer Minot. Another good one is this 2021 GQ shoot. It doesn't feature a suit, but it's another display of Zendaya's more masculine side and clearly isn't intended for the male gaze. Law said about it. For this, I thought it would be really interesting to shoot her. You know, she has a tomboy side of her. She played basketball when she was younger, so I thought it would be really interesting to show the world a little piece of that side of her. Instead of shooting her for the male gaze, shoot her in menswear to play against the more tomboy side of her. They're super relaxed. She's wild hair, basketball shorts, t-shirts when she's home. So I wanted to give the world a little peek into that part of her personality. Over the past couple years, it seems like things have come full circle for Zendaya. She's become such a force in fashion that Law said that often after she wears a brand, that brand will go on to compete for the LVMH prize and be included in the CFDA. Since they know this, they still make an effort to wear a lot of emerging designers. For years, Zendaya's dressed to impress on the red carpet, and she's finally winning awards at the events she's attended for years. In 2020, Zendaya won her first Emmy, becoming the youngest woman to win Outstanding Lead Actress in a Drama Series. Though most of the red carpet was virtual, she still wowed in two custom looks. The first was Christopher John Rogers, and it's a polished look, but still very 80s with the iridescent jewel tone skirt, collar blocking, and silhouette. When she won her Emmy, Zendaya was dressed in a Giorgio Armani Privé gown. This look also has a very vintage classic quality to it. It also makes me wonder if Zendaya personally loves polka dots because she wears them a lot, but, you know, she pulls them off. Most of Zendaya's Emmy looks evoke this classic old Hollywood vibe. This 2021 green Vera Wang look kind of gives Veronica Lake meets Poison Ivy. I reviewed this black Valentino look for the 2022 Emmys months ago, and my only critique was that I wish the skirt was a pant, but everything on the top half is stunning. Law always styles Zendaya just enough so that she looks polished and complete, but it's never too much. In 2021, Zendaya won the CFDA Fashion Icon Award. At 25, she became the youngest winner in the award's history. Zendaya accepted the award in a red Vera Wang two-piece with a bandeau and a take on a peplum skirt. The skirt kind of makes Zendaya look like a blooming flower and adds intrigue to the columnar silhouette that we see a lot on Zendaya. But fashion did something special for me. It gave me the extraordinary gift of transformation. The ability to become and embody all these different characters and be literally anyone I wanted to be. Thankfully, when I was 14, I found my, my co-director of sorts. One who saw what I did and sometimes more than I could have ever imagined on my own. 
that being a law roach. <laughs> My fashion soulmate, historian, and constant inspiration, thank you for pushing me to see all of myself. In their coverage of her win, Harper's Bazaar claimed it would have been well-deserved regardless, but was especially so thanks to Law's exquisite styling over the past year. They pointed to ensembles like her stunning Valentino Oscars dress and the 2003 Versace gowns and Day Awards to the BET Awards, the shorter version of which Beyonce had originally worn. But undoubtedly, one of her most memorable looks that year was the pink Tom Ford breastplate. The breastplate was inspired by YSL's collaboration with French sculptor Claude Lalonde. The breastplate was a popular piece that year, but Zendaya's showing created the most buzz. Law said her specific breastplate, which she wore to the Critics' Choice Awards, was custom made to fit her using a 3D scan of her body. Zendaya was recruited for Valentino's pink campaign for fall 2022, and it seemed like everyone who was anyone in Hollywood sported at least one look from the collection. In the photo shoot, Zendaya modeled a mini dress and suit, but wore a different floral pink suit to the Valentino show during Fashion Week. Prior, she'd been the face of their Rendezvous collection, but hands down, this is still my favorite Valentino look of Zendaya's. Zendaya and Law have already pulled several stunning looks during awards season this year. This pink Valentino dress for the SAG Awards is my personal favorite so far. The color complements Zendaya very well, and despite the baby pink and flowers, it doesn't look childish at all. It's another look reminiscent of old Hollywood glam. The hair and makeup is a tad more modern, well, modern compared to old Hollywood anyway. And as Law promised, it does look like he and Zendaya are also venturing into sexier territory. This custom Raul Mishra look was another win for Zendaya. She wore it in Mumbai to attend the opening of the Nita Mukesh Ambani Cultural Center. Law also wore Raul Mishra. The pair were styled by his team and were also adorned with Bulgari jewelry. Just recently, Zendaya has been named as an ambassador for Louis Vuitton and is the face of their cappuccin bag. This, of course, comes after the fallout from the Louis Vuitton show in March, which resulted in Law retiring from styling. He said that he was over the behind-the-scenes politics and the disrespect. There were also murmurs that major fashion brands like Louis Vuitton were attempting to poach his clients, many of whom had become fashion icons with his help just to exclude him from the deals. But of course, all of this is alleged, and Law said he'll still be styling Zendaya because he's called their relationship a forever thing. Just a couple weeks ago, Zendaya made a surprise appearance at Coachella and performed music for the first time in over seven years. She joined Labyrinth to perform I'm Tired and All For Us, which are both featured in Euphoria. She wore a ruffled pink mini dress that was layered over a white tank top and paired it with some thigh-high black Christian Louboutin boots. Not only was the look considered a Euphoria nod because of all the Y2K fashion influence in the show because it's a current trend, but it was also seen as a callback to Zendaya's Disney days. What has always captured people about Zendaya's fashion is that she's always shown she's willing to experiment. In addition, Law never got complacent with Zendaya's status, and you can see in each look there's a concerted effort to pick something that will make a statement. Fashion is an art form, so it's based in experimentation as much as it's based in aesthetic. True fashion isn't always about doing what's conventional, but sometimes sacrificing some of that conventional appeal for the sake of the art. And what I mean by that is fashion isn't just about being pretty. Most people on the red carpet look pretty. Zendaya will look pretty wearing a paper bag. But the reason we talk about her fashion is because aside from just looking pretty, the looks are memorable and they're inspired. You know, even as someone who follows red carpets pretty closely, so I look at Zendaya's fashion a lot, it's kind of interesting to know how many of her looks are inspired by past decades. Some of them are more obvious than others, but you know, once it's been clear to you, it's kind of impossible to unsee it. And I think it kind of goes under the radar sometimes because like I said, Zendaya is amazing at doing these sort of classic and vintage looks, but she never looks dated herself. And as much as we have to give Zendaya her credit for looking flawless in these looks and for her input, we have to give Law Roach his flowers as well. And you know, for the majority of the time, he wasn't just styling Zendaya, so he had to style several different people and put a lot of looks together for a lot of people, but still managed to do so in a way that each styling fits them. Like, Law Roach is not half-assing anything out here. Like, aside from Zendaya, off the top of my head, he styled Anya Taylor-Joy, he styled Celine Dion, he styled Tom Holland, I'm pretty sure he styled Kerry Washington for some events, he styled Haley Steinfeld. Law Roach is everywhere. A lot of your favorite looks are Law Roach looks, and you might not even know it. And Ariana Grande. And you know, at the end of the day, I understand Law wanting to retire because he has worked too hard in this industry. He has built too many people up. As he says, he's the image architect. He has styled so many people and done so much work just to be disrespected and just be dismissed. So I get it. You know, sometimes you don't need, you go where you're wanted. You go where you're appreciated. And if he's not appreciated, I get wanting nothing to do with it anymore. 
it just sucks that it was his passion but i think at this point it's not anymore because he just got disrespected out of loving his craft which is you know it's very sad to see but at the end of the day i am glad that he's still continuing to style zendaya and i will forever support their working relationship and zendaya will ever support it too because you know you can't go up for zendaya's looks without going up for law and zendaya herself goes up for law so you know match made in fashion heaven i love them and i just get excited to see whatever they're gonna do next as always, thank you so very much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe so that you can stick around for more. Also, make sure to follow me on Twitter if you'd like to keep up with me there. And if you'd like to become a channel member, the link is in the video's description. As always, thank you all so very much for watching. Love you very much, and I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.